I'm a Star Wars, I used to tell people that I'm a Star Wars super freak. Because they would ask if I was a Star Wars geek or a Star Wars nerd. I said, no, nerds don't exist in Star Wars. They exist in Star Trek. But uh, I'm kind of more like a Star Wars super geek. At least that's the way I used to be back in the 90s. So when Episode 1 came out, there was this huge amount of advertising all over the country about the fact that there was another Star Wars film 16 years later. And they showed some footage of one of the premieres at a theater. I think it was uh, Indianapolis. But they showed some some guys in Stormtrooper costumes that looked like they were right out of the film. And I didn't know where they got them, so that's what started my uh, quest into costuming, accurate costuming from Star Wars. As I was going through internet searches back then, which, I don't know, I think the internet was kind of more limited as to what you could find, but I came across the R2 Builders Club on Yahoo, and at the time, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information available. I just thought, okay, cool, because I really love R2-D2, let's make an R2-D2, that'd be awesome. So I joined the club, I was number 249, I was the 249th member of the club, and I just kind of trolled for a little while to see what was going on. And I I didn't understand a lot of what was going on because it was had to do with electronics. It wasn't until the the club started doing more with blueprints that I started to get more involved. That's when I started participating in the discussions and whatnot. And uh, so I would say that around 2001, when 2000, 2001, when Dave Everett had the opportunity to go behind the scenes in Sydney and uh, talk to Don Bees, get access to the R2-D2 that they had there for the filming of episode 2 and they were putting together the blueprints for the club that I thought man now this is something I can do because I know how to read blueprints and I can create something if I have a blueprint and I've been doing I at the time I had been doing composites for about eight years and I thought hey I know fiberglass I'll go ahead and make it out of fiberglass now I thought that I would just do it for myself I didn't really think that I would make anything for the club at the time but as I started thinking about it more and more I thought eh, it'd be kind of cool to be able to offer it to the club if I'm gonna have the molds for myself I always wanted a droid army of my own and I could only imagine seeing all of these droids we never really got to see a ton of droids in the same place until episode one like on the, the ship when we first see R2-D2 and I thought man it'd be cool to have all those droids. I gotta have an R5, I gotta have an R2, so let's make a whole bunch of different ones. And uh, so the, the club released the skins files to myself and John Sherrill about the same time. And uh, I can't remember honestly which one of us had made the parts for the club first. But I just know that both of us were right about the same time. I think mine came in around the fall of 2002, and his part started in the spring of 2003, or somewhere around the winter of 2003. And uh, so essentially both the fiberglass skins and the aluminum skins were coming out at the same time. And there was just a big craze for it. People were going gangbusters for it. We started getting all of these little detail files for uh, for parts of R2-D2 that guys started having machined out of aluminum and there just became this huge craze for parts to be made for the club and uh, I, I honestly didn't expect to continue making stuff for a really long time I just thought it's a great way to contribute um, and although I never created my own R2-D2 I guess in a way I've got a droid army out there anyway just from all the parts that that I've been able to provide for club members I, 
I was never really happy with the the molds that I made for the skins. Uh, I they, there was just a lot of work involved, and there was always there were always things that I wanted to improve on. So for the last 12 years, I've done nothing but continue to improve on all of my stuff. So as each new part comes out, or each generation of the same part comes out, it it just gets better and better. Every time that there was a Star Wars celebration, we always saw the membership in the club grow. And now that the new movies are coming out, there's more and more members joining all the time. Um, seeing how many members there are, I think now there's over 14,200 or something like that in the club. Now, whether or not they're all members of Astromech or not, those are the amount of members that are officially part of the club through Yahoo. And I think that's probably the best way to judge how many people are in the club. Those are the amount of people that have joined. Depending on how many people are active, I just don't think there are that many people that are active. There are probably three to four hundred that are active as far as participating in discussions. Some of them very few. Some of them might just introduce themselves and then six months later they might post something. A lot of people end up just looking around the forum for a long time before they post anything. But active members who are building R2-D2s is probably only 200 people. 150 to 200 people. I doubt it's any, any more than that. And the idea behind building an R2-D2 from the very beginning for me was always something very overwhelming, particularly when it came to the electronics, because I'm a dummy with electronics. And although I'm capable of doing the things that I'm doing, I've kind of approached building parts for the club from the viewpoint of simplifying things so that it's easier for club members to build something. When I first did a part count of how many parts went on R2-D2, these were separate parts. So on the skins, there's more than one part on the skin. It's more than just the inner and the outer. There's a couple of dozen parts because you have all of the panels that are on it. So you have to count all of those because they have to be individually cut, they have to be individually prepped, individually painted, and individually installed. So you have dozens of parts just on the skins themselves and you ended up on a droid uh, if it was built in that fashion over 300 parts. And 300 parts can be very overwhelming if you've never taken on that kind of a project before. So when I've thought about my parts, I've thought that in order to keep them compatible with everything else in the club, that I had to build them exactly the same as everything else in the club. Well, that's not true. And I can continue to build things where there's a lot of stuff integrated that people don't have to worry about. And the more that I can integrate, but still works with other club parts, like, like a body or a frame uh, or a pair of legs, as long as there's something in there that makes it easier for the person to build, that's kind of my goal, is to promote more people building in the club because things can be very overwhelming in the club. I can't imagine the viewpoint of somebody brand new coming into the club and seeing all of the activity, but also seeing just the amount of work that's involved. And it can also be discouraging when you do see people that, that have the skill set and they can build an R2-D2 rather quickly. It can be discouraging to the other people if they don't have the time, or if they don't have the skill set. So the idea is to simplify things for people so that they can build an R2-D2. They're not buying an entire R2-D2. They're not buying a kit. They still have to do some work. They still have to do some painting and assembly and all that. They can't buy everything all at the same time. They have to buy everything separately. But at least they have things a little more simplified and uh, uh, it, it'll just promote growth, I think, in the, in the club, especially with, I think that by the year 2020, we're probably gonna have over 20,000 members after all the next movies come out. That's a lot of people. And if we still only have three to 400 people that are building R2-D2s, that's nowhere near what, I mean, that's what, one and a half percent, two percent of the members of the club that are actually building. And uh, I think that, that we can certainly 
try to promote and encourage people to build if, if things are a little bit more simple. I know for other people too, uh, it can be a daunting impact on their wallet. And I think having something that is a high quality part allows you to build a high quality R2-D2. Something that is going to withstand the rigors of whatever the builder is going to put into it. Whether they're going to take it to shows, conventions, uh, birthday parties, whatever they're going to do with the R2-D2. Something that can withstand the, the pressures of use. And that's what composites can do. And that's what I love about composites too, is it's so versatile. You can do just about anything with it. You can make just about anything with it. We showed that you can make the surface of a dome real aluminum using composite materials.